Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. I think that most people that like to tinker have a bit of a problem with tools, and I'm no exception. I always want new ones, but I definitely can't afford everything yes, that I want. I do have it. some machines that can make tools, but to be honest, I don't know how to use them to a level that I think I should be able to. So today, we're going to be making myself a pair of can't twist style clamps, with a lot of figuring out along the way. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. I would like to start this video by saying this isn't really a how-to video. It will be more of a working through problems that arise along the way to getting these things made. So I'll start off with the steel that's going to form the main body of the clamps. I don't have any real ones to use as a guide or templates, but these aren't a hugely complicated design. And, uh, that's it. Go. We have these ones covered with a little layout fluid. Then I'll start by marking out my pattern. I've done some really rough sketches on paper, and from what I can tell, these should be made from about four main pieces. Two pairs of small arms, and two longer arms that will make up the cantilever action. For the design to work correctly, we need to work from a centre pivot, and from there, match the L sections that will make their way down to the clamping jaws exactly the same on both arms. Well, that's the idea. Also, the longest section of the arm needs to be able to come down directly on top of the corner of the smaller arm that will form the threaded pivot. Then a few centre punches for the holes. And yep, in hindsight, I could have just done this on the DRO with my mill. But again, I'm learning as I go on this one. The scribe lines don't show particularly well in this shot. But at this stage, we basically have some L's drawn on a piece of steel with some centre punch marks. We'll get all the holes drilled and reamed down to 6mm. Aside from the pivot hole in the smaller arms, which needs to be a little bit bigger at 8mm. Then using the holes as makeshift clamps, I'll bolt everything together and hack away the excess material with an angle grinder. I'm probably asking a little too much of this grinder here, but if I can get it cut most of the way, I should be able to break these off. And get to giving these a little bit more shape. I know this is probably the most ironic part of the project, as I'm trying to learn more about machining, but I do feel a lot more comfortable at the belt grinder for this kind of thing. And I know I'm in for a lot of hours of figuring out the rest of the parts that I need, so this should save some time. I'll grind these down to the scribe lines, keeping as consistent as I can while we have them all clamped together. And that looks like they've turned out okay. I can see that a couple of my holes aren't perfectly centered, but because they're the same on both sides of the clamp, I think they should be okay. But this little guy, he's supposed to be off center. I moved that hole up a little as I was worried that the standoff I put there might interfere with the pivoting action later down the track. And last step for these, I'll give them a brighten up on the grinder for a bit of a brush look, and they can be set aside. Alright, so this is where my lack of experience in this space is going to slow me down. I'm going to hold together the arms of the clamps together with standoffs and bolts. But to make them as rigid as possible, I want to inset the ends of the pins into the frame. Most of these style clamps you see are peened over on the ends of the pins to lock them down. But I want to be able to put these together and take them apart to adjust if I need to. And why not make it a little harder for myself while I'm trying to learn? So I'll turn down some steel to 8mm, and then cutting the ends of the pins at 6mm to go into the holes we drilled and reamed earlier. Then I'll drill and tap the ends for M5, and I can put these aside so we can get to the blingy parts. So 
Saying these things out loud sounds kind of dumb, but brass is so much nicer to machine than steel. It seems to be a lot more forgiving surface finish wise and doesn't want to play up anywhere near as much as the steel. For the brass pivots, I'll face it off and take the bar down to 19mm in diameter and then cut in a matching 6mm diameter notch on the end. It was at this point in the project I started to ask myself a lot of questions about accuracy. I know we all want things to be as perfect as possible, but as someone who has basically only watched people make things like this on YouTube with no real world experience, how accurate is accurate? I know I want these end pieces to be quite snug, but how close do they need to be to 6mm diameter to still be able to pivot but have no gap on the ends? So I turned and measured and test fit until I found the answer about 0.1 of a mil or 4,000 to be a pretty good fit. Yes, you are tight like a tiger. But I'd love to hear from people that know a lot more than me. Does that sound about right for a reasonably loose pivot? If you know, let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate the feedback. Then I'll pop my bar into a collet block on the mill, fine center, and drill and ream a six mil hole through. This is gonna make the base of the lead screw and lock the thread into the smaller arm. Then I'll put it back into the lathe and make the second side match the first. Now I can work on the other pivot, and the process is exactly the same as the first. The only difference will be that we'll be taking the hole out to size for an M10 thread. This is going to be the main nut that the lead screw will go through and give us our clamping force. I know brass isn't the strongest material on earth for threads, but I do think it'll be strong enough for these clamps, as they won't see huge amounts of load. Then a quick countersink, part them off and match it up with the pivot on the other side. And these ones are finished up. Now it's onto the jaws. I'll cut a couple of slices of brass bar and get them squared up. Facing off brass might be my new favourite thing to do. There's something really satisfying about seeing that surface finish come to life. It wouldn't be one of my projects without something a little sketchy. I want these to have a groove in one of the faces in case I ever want to use these to clamp something around. But I don't have the right cutter for the job. But I do have a countersink that looks like it will give me about the right shape I'm looking for. So here goes. I'll just nibble off little bits at a time, taking it slow. It's actually working better than I thought it would. The surface finish isn't amazing, but surely with some practice, this could get a lot better. But for now, I'm gonna take that as a win. All we need to do now is drill a center hole to mount these pivots, ream it to size, and they can join the pile. And I saved the most exciting part for last. Time for the handles and lead screws. Unfortunately, the only bolt I could get my hands on was a stainless one that was long enough for what I needed, so it'll have to do. I'll turn down the end of the bolt to match the 6mm hole that I reamed in the brass pivot. I think this just needs to be long enough to fit through the pivot, with a really small amount poking through. And that looks about right. Then I'll drill and tap for an M5 bolt. 
I'm hoping here that popping a small bolt in the end of the thread will lock the pivot in place, and the small amount of stick out we have from the bolt will allow the thread to turn but keep the pivot captive. And yep, that drill bit is toast. I definitely forgot to turn down the speed on the lathe when drilling one of the steel pivots earlier, and she got hot. But we only have a couple of holes to go, and it's still cutting. Then a quick tap, and I'll flip it and work on the bolt head. I've done a fair whack of flipping parts over in the lathe chuck on this one, but for none of the parts I'm making, concentricity isn't something I'm hugely worried about. I hope. I'll get this one turned down to 12mm. Now this is another one of those how close do things need to be situations. I'm going to inset this bolt head into some brass and machine off the face, and I don't want there to be a gap, so I know I want this one to be tighter than the pivots were in the frame, but I need this to be able to screw together by hand. I got it down to about 0.05mm or 2 thou in the end. Let's see what this does when we make these knobs. Knob time. And this is the one part of the project I didn't really plan at all. I've seen other much smarter guys than me make these kinds of handles before. But as I've never made anything like this, I didn't really know what I was looking for. So I set up my knurling tool, locked in the lead screw and let it work its way down the bar. Then cut in a recess to give me something to grip onto and part it off. Then with it flipped in the chuck, I'll face off the top and drill out the centre for another M10 thread. Then up the drill bit and drill an oversized hole into the top. I'll give it a ream and then tap the smaller hole at the base. Now to see if I was close enough. I'll splash a little retaining compound around and run the handle up the thread. And the fit is pretty good. I could have gone closer by the way it feels, but it's very close. I tossed and turned on whether this next part was a good idea. The part was looking pretty good, but I'm itching to see if I can make this work. So in a six-sided collet block, I'll lock it down as tight as I can and start making these scallops. This was pretty nerve-wracking for me, but it actually went really well. I don't know how to do the math to do this with a DRO. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> but I simply made a cut, rotated the block to the next face, and bore the end mill into the part at the same depth for each scallop. I'm sure I'll try something like this again in the future. One thing I did learn here is that it was inclined to chatter a little as I got to the target depth. Next time, I'll cut these a little shallower. Now I'm not going to pretend they're perfect. The second one I made is much better than the first, but the spacing is pretty consistent all the way around the handle. Now for the last bit of machining. I'll cut a little hollow into the top to blend everything together. Give it a quick deburr, and these are all finished up. And now it's time to put these all together. I'm just using some black socket head screws with some brass washers for a little bling to hold these all together. I'm pretty surprised with how well these came together. I'm not sure why I waited so long to try and make something like this, but I definitely have the bug now. I'm itching for some more tool projects.
I think the biggest takeaway is that you don't need to be an engineer to take on something like this. While someone with more experience would have probably made these better, there's something special about the mistakes and learning along the way. But there we go, my take on a can't twist clamp. Surely these will make some appearances in upcoming videos. Thanks for hanging around everyone. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one. Bye -bye.